I have reasons to say Islam is a fake religion, but first of all I wanna tell you that this game you see in the background has nothing to do with the topic of this video. I just thought looking at the game is better than looking at nothing. And if you are Muslim then don't rush to press the dislike button, because if you answer every single question I have in this video then I will convert to Islam, I swear. But there has not been a single Muslim who could do it. I also I also think that most Muslims are very good people, I respect them and I like talking to them, which brings us to the question, why am I even making this video? Let me start by introducing myself. So I was born in this little Eastern European country called Lithuania, where believers of Islam make up only 0.1% of the population. Yeah, to be fair nobody even cares about Islam there. 93% of Lithuanians call themselves Christians, but let's be honest, over 50% of those people believe that you only live once. But I was born and raised in a Christian family and in 2015 I met my first Muslim friends online. They were extremely friendly, in fact back in 2015 they were my best friends. But one day we started fighting, they tried to convince me that Islam is the right religion and I tried to convince them that they are wrong. But back then I knew nothing about this religion so I couldn't defend my opinion. Which brings us to the year 2020. Nine months ago I found this beautiful online girlfriend but the catch is she is Muslim. That's when I became interested in this religion. I would watch videos about Islam almost every day. I would analyze what I learned and there was a time when I wanted to become Muslim myself. But thanks God I didn't because the further I went the more illogical and scary things I learned about this religion. Most Muslims don't know them because they believe what their parents believed and they are afraid to research more because if they found something against Islam they would disgrace their families. And yes, I know that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, I will tell you why later in this video. But now let's start exposing Islam. So the Quran is a holy text of Islam. The Quran functions similarly to the Bible, but Muslims believe that the Quran is a direct spoken word of Allah. And by the way, Allah means God in Arabic. By the end of this video you will know why the Quran is not a direct word of God. But first, let's take a look at how the Quran was written. So back in the 7th century there lived this guy by the name of Muhammad. And long story short, one night Muhammad was praying to Allah and boom the angel Gabriel is in front of him. Muslims believe that the angel dictated the word of God to Muhammad who couldn't read. Yes, that's right, he couldn't read so the Quran was written down and memorized by people around him. Okay, first of all, did you know that it was a late night when Muhammad saw the angel, some people think he was asleep and we call it dreaming. Muhammad would praise people who memorized the Quran and encourage everyone to do so. Only when Muhammad died his followers decided to compile all the Quran verses and turn them into one book. Most people wouldn't trust something gathered by different people over many years. The Quran was written from the memories of Muhammad's followers and of course they couldn't memorize an entire text word by word which contradicts the common Islamic belief that Allah's word cannot be changed. It's a fact that the Quran was written by multiple people over many years. And there are currently over 30 different versions of the Quran, I mean 30 different Arabic versions of the Quran, not translations. The reality is that most Muslims don't even know it, just google it if you don't believe me. If you still believe the Quran is a word of God then tell me which version out of 30 different versions is the right one. Exactly, it's impossible that the Quran is a direct word of God. And if you are Muslim, then I'm sorry to tell you, but you've been lied to. But that's not everything I have to tell you about the Quran. Did you know that this book has been corrupted by people? Just take a look at this short video clip. It is he who made the sun a shining light, and the moon a light, and determined for it faces, that you may know the number of years and account of time. Allah has not created this except in truth. He detailed the signs for a people who know. 
chapter 10, verse 5. The original Arabic text calls the moon a nur. Nur means simply light. Let's look at regular, old, classic translations of this verse. As you can see, the classic translations accurately translate that part of this verse, in which the sun is a shining light, a shining object, and the moon is a light. These translations are still honest, because back then we didn't care much about reality and science. But now let's come to a more modern translation. It is the first English Quran translation that you find when you Google Quran. It is he who made the sun a shining light, and the moon a derived light, and determined for it faces. Whoa, do you see that? It says derived light, or a reflected light. Although it doesn't say such a thing in the original verse, it just says nur, and the word nur means simply light. But the Sahih International Translation adds its own words to the verse and calls it a reflected light or a derived light. This is not even in brackets or anything, it's directly inserted in the verse and changes the Quran. Isn't this a corruption of the Quran? You can follow this guy on YouTube, the link is in the description. The Quran also claims that the earth is flat and that there are are just two genders even though there are people born with both genitals or even without any genital organ. If you don't believe me, there's a video in the description of a teenager who's born with no sexual organ. You can find even more illogical things about the Quran if you start analyzing this religion beyond Muslim people because real Muslims will defend the Quran no matter what. Now let's talk about the pioneer of Islam, your lovely prophet Muhammad. He did not act like a real prophet, in fact, most Muslims don't know some of the most disgusting facts about his life. Why don't they know it? Because again, most Muslims don't even want to research their religion, they believe everything their parents believed, but don't worry, I'm gonna tell you something very interesting about Muhammad. Did you know that Islam grew rapidly not because people wanted to worship Allah, it grew rapidly because of all the bloody measures Muhammad used to get new followers. It was like, Hey, would you like to become a Muslim? No, thanks. Join me or else I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> okay, I'm joining you. Isn't it weird how Islam is a religion of peace but the prophet of this religion wasn't peaceful? I present to you a Dr. Philip Spetters. He has more than 40 years worth of experience in religious studies. This is what he has to say about the Prophet Muhammad. Muhammad was not a nice person. Nice people do not put people to death for criticizing them. Nice people do not take their adopted son's wife for their own wife and then declare that adoptions are illegal. And yes, Muhammad did it. Muhammad did adopt his son's wife and then he declared that adoptions adoptions are illegal. It was his decision to make them illegal, but of course he told everyone that it was Allah who made adoptions illegal. It's called being selfish, and yes, Muhammad was a selfish person. In fact, he was so selfish that he even fulfilled his sexual desires with a nine-year-old girl. Just take a look at this. Muhammad had sex with a prepubescent nine-year-old girl. We've been through the passages on Muhammad's relationship with Aisha a hundred times, but just in case someone recently arrived here from the Andromeda Galaxy, let's read one. Sahih al-Bukhari, 5133. Narrated Aisha that the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old, and then she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. The Muslim sources report that Aisha was playing on a swing when some women came to get her and take her to her husband. She was carrying her dolls as they led her to Muhammad's house, and we know how things must have unfolded once she got to his house. Clearly, he laid her down, took away her dolls, climbed on top of her, and forced his penis inside her. She didn't understand what was happening because no one bothered to tell her about sex. Frightened and confused, she cried because of the pain and bled all over her prophet's bed, but she tried to remain quiet out of respect for her new husband, who, in return, was endangering her life. Muhammad was more than 50 years old when he forced his penis inside his prepubescent nine-year-old child bride. 
You can find a link to this video in the description and I do recommend watching it. Did you know that once Muhammad said when you eat do not wipe your hands till you have licked it or had it licked by someone else? I don't know about you man but I find it disgusting. You know I don't wanna roast this man anymore but I'm very surprised there are so many blind believers who follow this man and they don't even know much about his life. And if you still think that Muhammad was the greatest man alive, I'm sorry to tell you, but you're stupid. You know, Muslims trust their scholars and leaders very much, but what if I told you that most of them intentionally lie? You would probably say, prove me. Okay, let me prove you, there's an example. This is Dr. Zakir Naik, he is one of the most popular leaders of Islam. Hundreds of people converted to Islam because of his convincing speeches. Even I was very close to becoming a Muslim myself because of this man. But one day I found out that he's a liar, almost everything he says is copied from other Muslim apologists. Just take a look at this example. And that book of Jonah is one page. Book of Jonah less than two pages. When they threw Jonah overboard, was he dead or was he alive? When Jonah was thrown overboard, was he dead or alive? The storm subsides and a fish comes and gobbles him up. A fish comes and gobbles him up. Dead or alive? When the fish swallows him up, was Jonah dead or alive? On the third day, the fish vomits him on the seashore. Dead or alive? The fish vomits him out. Jonah comes onto the shore. Was he dead or alive? If he died, no miracle. If he dies, no miracle. Alive, 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 alive. Alive, 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 alive. So it's a miracle of a miracle of a miracle. Miracle of a miracle of a miracle of a miracle. And I found three other modern Muslim apologists on YouTube who copy the same thing and pretend to be smart. Many Muslim scholars even mentioned that the Prophet Muhammad was in the Bible. I know the Bible because I was raised in a Christian family and I can confirm that there's no Muhammad in the Bible. Why? Because he's the false prophet. Muslims believe that Muhammad was the final prophet and if you google the last prophet in the Bible it won't be Muhammad and I'm not even defending the Bible, I talk from an atheist's perspective. I also want to mention that penis circumcision is necessary according to the Quran and some Islamic scholars say that parents who circumcise their children will get their happiness in return. So let's see how happy are circumcised Muslims. I'm a Muslim. Circumcision is genital mutilation. If foreskin wasn't necessary, men would have born without it. I'm so mad because my parents circumcised me and didn't give me any choice. It's my organ and no matter religion, I would like to make my choices. I'm a Muslim by the way. Yeah, parents who circumcise their children will get happiness in return, that's for sure. You know what's funny? Most Muslims believe in bullshit their leaders say, even though they intentionally lie. And if you can't trust the leaders of your religion, can you trust the religion itself? The word Islam is derived from the Arabic word Salm or Slam, I don't know how to pronounce it, which literally means peace. As we already know, the Prophet Muhammad was not a peaceful guy. But to the credit of Islam, today modern Islam in most countries is peaceful. But not in Pakistan, where Muslim girls are being taught how to behead people who make fun of Prophet Muhammad. Take a look. Do you still want to be a part of this religion? <laughs> also, please, someone tell me why when Christians or Hinduists leave their religions, people are like, mm, okay, it's your choice. But when a Muslim leaves Islam, oh, everyone wishes to see him dead. I will show you a video of this ex-Muslim girl who decided to stop wearing hijab and take a look at what Muslims think about her decision not to wear hijab anymore. Slowly, you will be a porn star. Dina didn't get banged enough when she was young. Now she's opening up sexually. Ah, uh, I've seen this too many times. Dog. I hope you and your family all die painfully and slowly. Absolute disgrace. Disgusting. 
Dina looks like an old witch. She has aged. She a fat whore with a grommet nose. You took the hijab off. Now you're doing horse riding. Next step sure would be... <laughs> Next step sure would be... Riding or being a porn star. Plus the English accent is awful to hear. Dina Tokyo, you are toxic. Fire of hell is waiting for you. F off. You are a hoe. Is that what peaceful people say? I don't think so. But to the credit of Islam, most Muslims I know are very peaceful and good people. Now many people will blame me for saying that prayers are stupid. But they are not, okay? Even I pray sometimes. But Islamic prayers are stupid. Let me explain why. So I already proved to you that Quran cannot be a word of God. I already proved to you that Muhammad was a false prophet. And I already proved to you that you can't peacefully leave Islam. So why would you even pray to Allah? But if you still pray 5 times a day like a regular Muslim, then you waste 25 minutes of your life every single day. And just like some people say, time is money. Why 25 minutes? Because one prayer approximately lasts 5 minutes. And Muslims have to pray 5 times a day. So 5x5 five five equals 25. And if you don't know, Muslims have to wake up before sunrise to pray. And I know that the younger generation likes to go to sleep very late. And it's very hard to wake up early. And going to sleep late plus waking up so early negatively affects your health. And yes, I mean Islamic prayers negatively affect your health. Also Muslims pray looking at the side of Mecca, which is Muhammad's birth city. And trust me, God doesn't give a crap which side you are looking at when you pray. If you are a believer, it's okay, keep praying, but you don't have to do it at specific time and 5 times a day. Pray anytime you feel like you need to. If you believe, then God will listen to you even if you pray one time every three days. And if you don't believe, then don't pray. It's your choice. And I forgot to mention Muslims have to bow and do weird things when they pray. And there is no other religion that requires you to do similar things. Christianity doesn't require to do it. Talking of Christianity, 76% of people in this world identify themselves as Christians. If you are Muslim, are you telling me that all of those people will go to hell? Welcome to the last part of this video, where I'll explain why Islam is the fastest growing religion. There's more than one reason. So the first reason is that birth rates in Muslim families are much, much higher than in non-Muslim families. An average Muslim family has two children more than an average non-Muslim family. And I told you that you can't really leave Islam peacefully, so many children stay Muslim for their whole lives. Another reason is that it's very simple simple to follow Islam. Many people will say that it's much more simple to follow Islam than any other religion. That's why this obviously false religion is growing so fast. After watching this video, do you still want to fast and walk hungry and thirsty during Ramadan for Allah? Do you still want to cover your hair for Allah? Do you still want to read the Quran every day for Allah? I don't think so. If you want, then try to convince me that Islam is the right religion. And if you do, I will gladly accept your religion. It took me 8 months to gather all of this information. And if you want to support me, subscribe to this channel. Just keep in mind that I like to swear a lot in my videos. Like a lot. Now I'm gonna take a couple days off from YouTube. And see you guys later. Bye.